Thanks, James. So uh, inflation, solid. Uh, Oracle, pretty good, too. It's a pretty nice cocktail for bulls here this morning. Hey, Oliver, good to see you. And boy, is it ever. I mean, you know, what really hit those tech stocks terribly in the last year and a half was those, you know, high inflation, the Fed going after it. Of course, now the Fed is done. Today's CPI number suggests it. And, uh, you know, Oracle really popping uh, up 9, 10% this morning. Uh, and what's interesting is they missed on earnings and revenue. I think that's because investors are starting to recognize. Yeah, you got to be patient with these second derivative AI tech plays. You know, the first place you want to be is semis, which we've talked about before, you and I. Uh, but for Oracle and Salesforce and even Adobe to get that traction and earnings from all this AI, it's going to take investors to be patient. The call for Oracle, Ellison, I thought, did a great job bringing up two extremely important announcements. One is the partnership with Google Cloud, which is huge. Right? That's going to be a big promise for growth going forward. And the other is OpenAI selecting Oracle to help Microsoft expand the Azure Cloud Services platform. So in the past two quarters where they missed, they beat the stock up. I think with Ellison's comments, these announcements, I think that's what you're seeing. And that's why we like the stock here for sure. Okay. Fresh new all-time high. Uh, big, big move. It hadn't been, you know, a bad stock by any means this year, but it had been a little bit choppier, a little slower than some of the kind of pure trades, as you mentioned, the core of the semiconductor and uh, uh, whole breakthrough innovation trade. So uh, if Oracle stays here, I mean, it looks like it's going to to project it out on some of the more secondary components of the cloud sector, it seems like that's kind of where you want to go. That's interesting to me because that's a group that on earnings there was a little bit of a wake up to like, they're not quite there yet. So does this kind of bring like the sales force and others back into the fold maybe? Yeah, I hope it does. I, you know, I think investors have gotten very impatient because they're, you know, everybody wants to own the NVIDIAs. Of course we do and, and those types of stocks that have rocketed forward. But you know, uh, the valuations at some of those semis, they're, 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 the trees don't grow to the sky. So eventually you've got to go to where's the next play, as as, a, as any great hockey player would say, Greg would say, go where the puck is going to be. And the puck is going towards these other companies that are levering AI. So that's the Oracles, the Salesforce, the Adobe's. Uh, those are going to be the second derivatives. And this is a great time to own them. Oracle, you know, trading at 20 times earnings. Uh, and we can talk about Adobe as well as far as it's multiple. But these stocks are reasonable and the growth is coming, you know, in the next, I'd say, two or three quarters. It still seems to me like there's a difference between the hardware and software side, where Oracle still has connections into building out hardware as well, providing parts, providing services, yeah, and some of that software that goes with these build-outs of infrastructure that is, are driven by new AI. But then when we go to like an Adobe, which has a product that now is uh, being kind of competed away by AI and some at the very base level, right? Like, I don't need to get Photoshop now to generate a funny image of a, a bull running away with a bag of gold for my newsletter post, right? You know, like that's what I'm gonna make today and I'm gonna plug that into OpenAI and it's gonna give back to me in a minute. Uh, so when it comes to some of the services, how do we kind of gauge that where there's innovation for sure, like Adobe's got new tools, but there's also some disruption here from what AI can do that software, you know, required us to pay to do. Yeah, it's a, that's a great point. You know, we can sort of do now what, you know, a lot of Adobe products, uh, and you and I can, literally from our living room, uh, do what, uh, the, you know, now was so hard before. And, and I think that's why uh, Adobe's doing the right thing. I mean, they're part of the arms race. Buy as much NVIDIA uh, and AMD chips to get this technology to leapfrog uh, over uh, and faster than what we could do at home uh, just using AI. And I think that's the right management team that can do it. Uh, and I'm really interested, you know, the reporting tomorrow, June 13th, my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Hudson. Happy birthday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I think they're going to beat, and I think they're going to be on the top and the bottom line. They, they've done, they beat uh, top and bottom line for the last four quarters. 
Uh, and I think they're going to do it tomorrow. And I think investors need to be patient to, and realize that, hey, what they're coming to in the creative media numbers, which I'm very interested to see what those look like tomorrow, I'm sorry, digital media, and the creative cloud numbers, I think they're going to really start to see AI getting a lot of traction. And they're going to be offering something way better than you and I can do on AI sitting in our living room. But I like that analogy of making the bull bear uh, image. You can definitely do some cool stuff on AI. I think Adobe is just going to bring huge turbo booster uh, to this uh, this great uh, installed base they have of customers. Yeah, and they can find ways to keep the, the really higher end there, right? The one that's going to pay the most you know, for the casual user like uh, you or I that might you know buy it for a month and you know when we need it, et cetera. Uh, maybe they lose that a little bit, but uh, you know, the stock's already dropped a good bit. Maybe it started to factor some of that in, uh, where, I mean, it's been a clear underperformer. Yeah, tw down 25% for the year. Yeah. And, and you know, so it's been still beating on, on top and bottom. So I think there's a value play here if investors can be patient enough to let this AI sort of second derivative sort of sink in. And again, I think that's going to be happening over the next few quarters. Uh, and I hope investors can be patient. All right. Thanks for the thoughts, James. Appreciate that.